1978 was a year that I didn't realize for probably the first few years how important that was a part of my life. In fact, 1978 was a crucial part of my life. And I realized as I start this recording, the lighting's going, I'm using natural sunlight right now. I, didn't, I wanted to avoid whatever. <laughs> Well, hello everyone, it's me, Scott. You know that guy that you occasionally stumble across here on YouTube? Last week, I shared a patrons only video. I'm dreaming of summer, cool breezes, fresh air. When I want that feeling, summer's eve takes me there. And I figured in this video, I, I feel like I do need to start sharing a little bit more about who I am. Another passion of mine, 1978 huge year the one of the most important years of my life it was a year that molded me it was a year that created who i am today well technically speaking 1995 was truly the year that well that was the most important year of my life october 4th 1995 my son was born but i do have to give a huge shout out to mr chris baber him and i did a um patrons uh you know hang out it was longer than what we both expected he's been a huge well supporter to this channel and chris i owe you a huge thank you for everything you've been doing supportively for what's been going on so far with the uh, patreon campaign of mine all right i'm shutting up i just wanted to make sure i give a huge shout out to chris there and the other individual i'm going to respect his wishes he wants to keep it private you know when it comes publicly like this but if anything, Mr. S, let's see, they're going to think, you know, they're talking about me. You know who you are. You've been a big supporter even before I started Patreon. So thank you so much. There was this eight-year little boy that didn't realize how important 1978 was at that time. Granted, I was having so much fun in 1978. So why worry about it? But as years go by, 31 years later, more like 41 years later, you idiot. I, I want to say every about five years or maybe every year I start reflecting how crucial that year was for me. So let's get to this unboxing. What's this unboxing all about? Well, as you can see, I've got something here to my left. I figured, you know what? I made a little error when I ordered that. Not, it's not really, I'm, I plan on getting this anyways, but I noticed when I was doing the unboxing, I was like, wait a minute, was that the one that I wanted first? I didn't remember. I, I was so confused because, first of all, I was so thankful for that anyways. You know, at the uh, Van Halen store website. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not the one. I may have clicked on the wrong one. I don't know. Because even at the time when I was doing that video for those guys, this patrons only video, I started thinking... Wait a minute. Yes, I'm going along rambling like I am right now. I was like, that was, you know, on the website. But it doesn't matter. I was planning on getting that guy anyways. This was the one I, I was initially looking at. The one particular thing in my life that's been so, so valuable. You guys who have been watching me on a regular basis... And you're probably confused right now. This this thumbnail doesn't have anything to do with Halloween. I don't see a mask. I don't see him taking one out of the box. I don't see him. Yes, this is a channel where I have done mostly a genre, a niche of Halloween horror, which I've tried to add in more. Because all you people want is more, 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 more. It's been a big part of my life. I've been very thankful. It's what's helped me get to know a lot of you out there. But believe it or not, there's Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween 1978. There's this other thing in 1978 that I discovered. And to this day, 2019, in my heart, when it comes to these two things, it's still above Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween. It's been a huge part of my life. A guitar of all things. Uh, I got, I'm trying to make sure I don't get these little popcorn things all over the place. You know what I'm talking about, little popcorns. But yes, this is an unboxing of the EVH. It's a you know miniature guitar. It's official. 
<laughs> it's our, it's EVH uh, Eddie Van Halen, of course, Edward Van Halen, however you want to call it, Van Halen, the mighty Van Halen. This is actually a scale guitar replica. It's a, it's a 1.4 scale uh, that even has a guitar stand like you see the one over here. 1978. I'm this tough eight-year-old little blonde head, toe-head kid riding, you know, in his biker gang, the two of us. We were the chips. <laughs> One of us was Poncho. Anyways, we rode around in Forest Park Plaza a lot. You know, we live in Forest Park, Dayton, Ohio, North Dayton. If you're from around the area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're my age, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This area was awesome back then. It was great. I used to go to Forest Park Plaza. It was kind of like an outdoor mall. I'd go to Wall Wars. I'd buy my Star Wars action figures. Always looking for that damn Jawa. This guitar. Edwards Frankenstein or Frankenstrat has been known through the it's the rock and roll industry really since the beginnings like let's say for an example in this book I I mean a Van Halen book one out of many that I have you guys are probably possibly familiar with the black and white guitar that's really this guitar right here now if you're a huge van halen fan like myself you know all about this stuff yes this is the guitar the frankenstein it's like part gibson part fender and there's other edward could explain it better than i could see i don't consider myself to be a musician at all i have played the guitar it's been a long time i've taken lessons but i'm thinking i might get back into it again Right across the street, right there on Main Street, kind of, you know, not really a block, but catty corner from that, there was a, a record store called Peaches. Oh, Peaches. You know, I, I have, I've tried to Google up these images, and maybe I'll find it after I'm going through the uh, process of editing this video, but I have not found them yet. But Peaches Record Store, I used to go in there quite a bit as well to find you know, the next Kiss album, or whatever. I was so much into the rock and roll back then. Most of us were. I mean, there, that during that time, in the, in the mid to late 70s, disco was like taking over. And it was kind of frustrating for myself and a few others. I mean, I don't need to give you the history of that. It was, it was frustrating for a lot of us. I've been eyeballing this guy for quite a long time. These guys, I mean, I have EVH Converse. I have obviously EVH bar stools. I have had EVH all around my life since I was a little kid. I'm in Peach's record store. You know, I know I rode my bike because like I said, I was in a biker gang, you know, chips. Seriously, we called ourselves chips. We were pretending to be the cops on chips. <laughs> Now I wonder if this one did the same thing. I don't remember. But uh, in the back, you guys aren't gonna see it. Maybe you will. It has some images of the, uh, of course, the uh, guitar stand adjustable. It, it, it is adjustable, by the way. So I'm in there and I'm looking at records. Most of the time I'm not buying anything because it's, I, I was buying, spending most of my money on Star Wars at, you know, Wool Wars, but. <laughs> I'm in there looking at records because that's what we did. In fact, a lot of you are discovering that now. Younger kid, kids that are younger than my son, you're discovering records. You're discovering how crucial, how important vinyl truly is. I mean, it's vinyl is out doing CDs from what I understand. So that's awesome. And the box itself looks like a guitar case. <laughs> it's very cool. I uh, The last unboxing, I kind of went through the other one, which I have back here. This one, I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful. I mean, great, it's just cardboard, but still. Now I remember why I went through. Okay, because I'm doing a video. I'm doing an unboxing. I mean, there, like I said, I'm looking, I'm looking. And then all of a sudden, you know, because obviously there's music playing. If, if you're a record store and you don't hear music playing, then you're probably at a doctor's office. Well, no, no, you've got the elevator music on. But, but there's music playing. And then for the very, very, very first time, I'm hearing this bass, this... You know, I think you know how to get that. As I took the cardboard off, 
they have even these little stains up here of where Edward has been known back in the day when he used to smoke. So proud of him. He's he's uh, been uh, vaping now instead of smoking. But uh, yeah, he would put his cigarettes up here. And <laughs> you can see he would do it with all of his guitars mainly. You see a lot of his uh, guitar solos. Never in my life, and I know the majority of us, Now, if you grew up in L.A. during the time, then you guys were more familiar, Hollywood, you guys were more familiar with Van Halen. But I'm a little kid in Dayton, Ohio, that's discovering Van Halen for the first time. Discovering not only just eruption. Wow. If I ever had my hands on an actual size of the famous oh my god it even has a little see Edward would have like this um, two sided tape that he would he has basically right right here that he would put his guitar picks on and they even throw that in there that, I mean, they have everything down of course they have what this right here I know you guys can't see it and I'll try to get some close ups with it later this little silver shiny little thing is supposed to be a 1971 quarter. <laughs> Edward drilled like three holes in it. Yes. Three holes. One, two, yes. Believe it or not, guys, when it comes to Van Halen, I am more of a history buff when it comes to Van Halen than, believe it or not, John Carpenter's Halloween. Yep, you've learned it for the very first time. You're hearing me saying that for more for the first time. Now, I, I I could go on and on and on. I spent, when I was a teenager, oh, I was so critical. I was extremely critical about every detail when it came to Van Halen. My room, I wish I had enough common sense to taking photos of those bedrooms that I had. You'd never seen any paint on the walls because it was covered with photos, with posters of Van Halen. Occasionally, I had another poster somewhere else that wasn't Van Halen. I remember I had a, I had a Gene Simmons poster. I had a Freddie poster. I had Lamborghinis on the wall. Today, more mature, I hope. I don't get into, I don't know. I do, I'm not a doc, I don't have a doctorate when it comes to the history of Van Halen, but I consider myself to be someone very knowledgeable when it comes to Van Halen and, of course, Eddie Van Halen himself. I mean, I used to even pronounce his middle name. I, today, forget about it. Van Halen was the only thing in my life that was so important. Despite hanging out with my friends, having a good time, partying and stuff like that, but Van Halen was always there. No matter where I was at, Van Halen was there. I had Van Halen in, uh, in my $300 cars, I mean, in my home, cassettes, because cassettes were pretty big then, then DVDs, of course, as you know, I'm obviously I'm talking about the 80s right now. These are back here supposed to be reflectors. Apparently at one time, there was, okay, I'll step back a little bit. There was a kid who was so obsessed, more obsessed than I was when it came to this particular guitar. So he wanted to replicate it to, to every fragment that was in that guitar. And on the very back, these are supposed to be reflectors. Okay, that you would you'd get on a car or a bicycle or whatnot. But th this kid finally found the right reflectors at a truck stop. He said that was probably the most challenging thing for him to get the reflectors. So when Eddie, during back in the day, with all the lights on the stage, he would turn his. Which you see a lot of guitars do that. They would like more or less uh, have their guitar face the lights just to re you know bounce more light, just as an effect. It was just a really cool effect. So he would. Make sure you do it this way. He would turn the guitar out this way so the lights would hit the reflector and just bounce off to the crowd. So, pretty cool. And yes, it's like, oh, what do you like more? David Ross, Sammy Hagar? I love them both. Because as far as I'm concerned, Van Halen is Eddie Van Halen and Alex Van Halen. And yes, and, you know, Michael Anthony. And I always enjoyed Sammy Hagar. And I enjoyed David Roth. But Van Halen, like I said, it's... It's Eddie Van Halen, period. That's what you... <clears throat> I've seen Van Halen in concert 14 times. Now, I know there might be a comment down there 
or two, well, I've seen them 25 or I've seen them 50. Well, that's awesome. Then you've experienced more of Van Halen than I ever did or ever will. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's absolutely amazing the details that they have on this particular car. Now, I plan on getting a few, the, the rest of them. I'll probably have another one of these right here because this has been, I've been obsessed with this image for so many years, even on my phone. Believe it or not, if I can reach it, come here, guy. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Yeah, it already went off. But on my phone, like I said, you guys may not be able to see it, but I even have Van Halen on my phone. Probably couldn't see it, but I've, I've always had Van Halen in my life. And I've been obsessed with this pattern here ever since uh, the, we started. Well, it wasn't in 1984, but obviously 1984 MTV was big to so many, like Jump and Panama. I'd say the majority of people really started seeing this guitar, but this was, I want to say it was the Fair Warning or Diver Down. I can't remember. See? See, it's been a while. Like I said, when I was a teenager, I was obsessed about every detail. Today, mm, I'm older. There's more things in my life that are more important to me, like my son. But what, uh, <laughs> yeah, this guy right here. I'm just going to leave it at that. Right here, 2019. There's rumors once again of Van Halen going on tour. This time there's, well, it's rumors that Michael Anthony is going to be rejoining the band. Now, I've even seen interviews with Sammy Hagar, where obviously those two are joined at the hip today. And they're great friends. All power to them. I'm, I'm, they're very lucky to have each other. You know, there's denial, denial, denial. But of course, they're going to have to deny. Michael's going to have to deny those rumors. You know, there's nothing signing on the dot. They have managers they have to. Like, chances are it's just rumors. Been obsessed with it. I mean, I, I even one time was going to get a tattoo of this guitar. I mean, my first tattoo is already right here. I bet you guys didn't know that. It's my very first tattoo. I only have two of them. My second one, well, I was reflecting... Van Halen at the time, Cabo Wabo, so. 1978. Such a huge year for me. And as I get older, I'm always going to be thankful for John Carpenter's Halloween and, of course, the mighty Van Halen. Thank you so much, guys, for all the wonderful support. Don't worry, I'm still going to do the horror stuff. I wanted to share with you this other passion that I've had even longer. That's right. So thank you so much. You know what to do. The subscribing, the patron, whatever. Or like, dislike. Or even better, go watch somebody else that's more entertaining than me here on YouTube. Have a wonderful week, weekend, wherever this video is at at this point, And I'll see you soon. Take care. Cause all you people want is more, 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 more! Leave her alone!